Now, one in eight Americans have now, now have liver disease. And that's what uh, one of these studies by Rob, Rob, Robin, um, Robin Massange and uh, Sarah Lini and the, Michael Antonou and George Rennie and this team, Malcolm Ward, all showed that uh, glyphosate, when you know administered to rats at ultra low doses, revealed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in those rats. So it caused non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in those rats at levels, I think there are like four parts per billion per, per kilogram of body weight, which is definitely uh, lower than what we humans are consuming uh, per kilogram of body weight. And you can see in this chart, the astronomical surge of uh, the blue line is the GMO corn and soy crops planted. Um, and the red line is glyphosate applied to the corn. And you can see the pre-1990 trend of liver disease. And then you can see the liver cancer incidence increase um, exponentially along with the increase of G glyphosate applied to the, to the corn. And, and these, these are from Nancy Swanson and Stephanie Seneff, uh, you know, interpreted them. And so this is about thyroid disorder. You can see that there is, of course, a very close correlation of, of a thyroid disorder being caused by glyphosate. And there are scientific studies too that show that that's actually what is happening. And there's also a maternal exposure to um, glyphosate that's leading to autism in rats or autism like symptoms is what they're showing. And the core, the relation to this, the, the correlation to this, the closeness of the correlation to this is closer is, than that of smoking and lung cancer. Okay. So this is, and, and it's been shown in studies to, to, to contribute to autism and we, autism and we have hundreds, if not thousands of mothers that have reported to us that when they get their kids switched over to organic, their autism symptoms, uh, decrease or greatly improve. Uh, such as I showed in my son as well. So we see it across the board. Now, what I'm also very concerned about is that glyphosate is sterilizing men and androgenase and, you know, making our, our female babies and draw more androgynous. There's a new study out by Dr. Shauna, Shauna Swan that shows that glyphosate exposure in utero caused an androgenization or a masculinization of the baby girl genital area. That means a lengthening between the anus and the genitals got longer, which is a masculine trait and goodness knows what else it's doing to them physiologically, you know, in their biology and in their brain waves and their, their sexual organs. Um, you know, we simply don't know enough about that yet, but I believe that this chemical is contributing to the, um, confusion this, you know, the sexual reproduction, uh, deformities and, um, uh, lack of function the way they normally do, uh, sex hormone drives has dropped considerably, um, and also, you know, I believe it may be contributing to, uh, gender confusion and, uh, problems there, which lead to depression and 50% of the children that are transgender do attempt suicide. And that to me is the most tragic, one of the most tragic things I've ever heard because every human life is prejudice is precious. I don't care what your sexual orientation is. Um, we should not be thinking that we need to end our lives because of that. And so I would just ask everybody to have compassion for people who are, um, you know, experiencing this uh, challenge or for family members that are condemning a person who is going through that, please consider that we're consuming probably 1200 different endocrine disrupting chemicals in our society now that was not happening 40 years ago. Okay. Um, also want to point out again, the sperm viability has dropped 49% since the glyphosate was introduced into our food supply. And, um, and, and that is a major problem in, you know, uh, male reproductive systems, their testosterone levels, all of that. So, uh, yes. So glyphosate herbicides, there's many studies now showing that male reproductive damage, female reproductive damage, um, the blood testes barrier, uh, is impacted by glyphosate. And, uh, you know, what I, what I ask in the bottom of this slide is, you know, the EPA has added so many endangered species to the list. Uh, since glyphosate has been introduced, it's just, just, I don't know, hundreds of species. We, we are in a pair that we have had like a 75% loss of our insect population just in the past uh, 20 or 30 years since glyphosate was in, in being introduced. I'm concerned we're going to be adding the human beings 
to the endangered species list if we keep going in this direction. I am very concerned that we will not be able to procreate naturally. And then the only people who will be able to procreate will be the people who can afford in vitro fertilization. And that those people will only be the highest, most elite, wealthiest people in the country, um, who uh, many of them who are getting wealthy um, off the sickness of other people that are perpetuating the problem. So, um, and there's more evidence that glyphosate is, is a reproductive uh, danger because it has shortened the gestations contributing to miscarriages um, and development delays and infant deaths. And uh, this is from a study on 71 different um, pregnant women in Iowa that, that lived close to the, um, the, you know, the farms that spray glyphosate and they showed a definite, a significant shortened gestational link um, in this, in this, um, sorry, this one's, this slide says, okay, one says Iowa, one says Indiana. I'll, I'll make sure to correct that. Okay. So glyphosate, um, also disrupts the gut microbiome, weakening the immune system. I think I mentioned this before, but I just wanted to show you, there are studies showing that it does this in, in bees and poultry and in humans. And, um, and this is again, no joke because weakening the immune system is what of course led to the shutdowns all across America with, you know, hundreds of thousands of businesses being closed. I believe it was 40% of black owned businesses disappeared during COVID. That is tragic. Um, any business being shut down is tragic and, um, you know, kids being locked up, locked up at home and not able to go to school at their development, developmental abilities dropped. Um, and, and, you know, this is all, I believe, due to the fact that we've been exposing ourselves to glyphosate so long and weakening our immune systems that the American people had far more severe reactions to COVID than people, for instance, in Japan, if you look at their numbers, um, their, their numbers were far less, uh, for, from COVID. So, okay. So I know I've talked quite a bit now about all the bad stuff it's going on in the food supply, but maybe not all of it. I just covered some of it, but, um, what can we do? Well, we can grow, buy and eat organic. That is for sure. As I said before, it's very little, uh, of very few, um, organic products are testing positive for glyphosate. And when they do, it's usually very low, just avoid the highly processed ones. So if you buy organic, you are definitely exposing yourself to fewer pesticides and, and lower quantities of glyphosate for sure. And so we do continue to urge you to do that. Now, for me, it doesn't have to be USDA organic. Um, I also love uh, the Real Organic Project, Regenerative Organic Certified, Demeter, Biodynamic, um, and just knowing your farmer. I, I frankly, I buy a lot of my uh, produce at the local farmer's market in the summertime. If I'm not growing my own last, actually last summer, I hardly had to buy any food from the farmer's market because I was growing so much of it myself. And, um, and, uh, but I, and I do get my meat from a farmer that I personally know is not giving his cattle, the MRNA vaccine or any other vaccine and is not feeding them GMOs or glyphosate or anything like that. So that's, uh, how I predominantly purchase my food as I know my farmer. Now we, we, when we go to switch to organic, um, it has been proven to dramatically reduce the amount of pesticides that we are exposing ourselves to Charles Benbrook showed from his Heartland Health Research Alliance that the majority of the consumption of pesticides are consumed through conventional fruits and vegetables. And, um, and just by switching to organic, you can reduce your, your in con consumption of pesticides by 98%. So what this also shows me is that if nutritionists and doctors are telling their patients to eat more fruits and vegetables, but they're not saying eat organic, then they're actually going to be encouraging them to expose themselves to more pesticides, right? Than they normally would be to 98% more, in fact, pesticides. So any healthcare practitioners out there, I charge you with saying, eat more organic fruits and vegetables, because if you don't, you are contributing to the problem. And I, I, frankly, I almost cried recently when my functional medicine doctor um, prescribed to me a you know whole litany of I got tests done, genetic tests done, metabolic testing done, um, you know sorting out some of my health issues that are going on. And uh, at the bottom of the thing, it said eat organic as much as possible. And I just almost cried because I was like, this is what I've been looking for for over a decade now, and finally doctors are doing this. So I, I highly recommend functional medicine doctors. Now on your own, if you want to start avoiding glyphosate, you know just from what I just said. 
here's the top 10 foods with high, the highest residue levels of glyphosate, oats, wheat, and chickpeas. Now, in some cases, chickpeas were the highest. I just want to re reiterate that. But in one group that we found oats was the highest, then wheat, and then chickpeas, mung beans were very high, lentils, buckwheat, um, you know, all just different kinds of grains, eggs, uh, dairy, and soy. And these are non-organic, okay, non-organic crops. And, um, but when, again, when you do go organic, you can see that your glyphosate pesticide side levels will drop dramatically within six days on an organic diet. And I believe um, it went down to 100% in a different Norwegian study in two weeks by going on an organic diet. So it does work, folks, by going organic. And here's some information about where you can get tested. We also have this on our website, momsacrossamerica.org under data, it says get tested. And we have the labs, the Health Research Institute, Laboratories, Detox Project, Great Plains Lab, and Million Markers tests for PFAS, phthalates, and parabens as well. Mm -hmm.